Scott Culley. You know, I was... I always like to talk about being spoiled when I was first saved because I had a chance and opportunity to go to and be a part of Calvary Chapel in the early days at Costa Mesa. Not the tent, but, you know, shortly thereafter. And I worked there for a couple of years as volunteer, you know, behind the scenes doing a lot of different ministries. And I also attended meetings seven days a week because being disabled at the time, I had the opportunity to do that. And I lived with three Christian roommates and it was just a wonderful, intensive study. It was at times when, you know, Chuck Smith wasn't that big or Chuck Missler wasn't that big. And, you know, I could go every Monday night to a Chuck Missler study and I could catch T. Thornton or I could get uh, Greg or Mike or Raul or just about anybody. You know, I mean, there was always something going on. So it was like everybody was just there, you know. I mean, it was just an intense time of it. Wow, sponge, <laughs> soaking it in. But one of the things that I was blessed by was a pastor by the name of Romaine, who was <laughs> a real character. That I would get a chance to go to his Thursday morning study, which was usually for women, but it was interesting. You know, I'd go there and I'd bring the tapes back to the tape playing library. But the point being is that. When I listened to his studies, one thing that impressed me whenever he was sharing, mainly about James, so <laughs> and anybody who knows Romaine knows he does James, but anyways, the thing that impressed me was that he conveyed to us, it's okay to be wrong. In other words, there are times where you may have the right scripture, and you may have the right uh, you know, attitude, or not, <laughs> and you may have the right thought, but you might have the wrong direction because God didn't tell you to do it. Or, if God told you to do it, it's because he wanted you to fail, not succeed. What? You mean God might want me to fail? Well, you see, there are times where you need to know that you're not the one in charge, but God is. And Romain had a way of bringing out the idea that when he wanted to do something like smack somebody around in a counseling session or he wanted to really get them, you know, so God, I, I'm all ready, you know, I've got my salvation scriptures right here and I've got them all listed out, you know, and i got my Bible open and I'm all ready to tell them that they're living in sin and that they need to repent, you know, they need to do this. And then the person comes in and tells them, um, we've been talking to the Lord, you know, and we just wanted to confer with you about, we think we're living in sin and we need to get saved and we want to, you know, separate so that we can just, you know, live godly lives and no longer follow, you know, our flesh. And Romaine would just sit there going, but I was so ready to really lambast them and tell them what they needed to do and here God went ahead. And you see, God can use you on something wrong that he might be right. In other words, you need to let go of your preconceived ideas that you have this super Christian with a big C on your chest, that you're going to be the saint of God with an S, and that you're always going to be right. Because God may want to humble you and allow you to be wrong. That you could be conformable by him to become something he needs you to be at the moment for the person. Because you see, when Romain made a mistake or anything, we loved it. When he'd share the honesty of his emotions, of how God was speaking to him about certain attitudes he had inside, we participated in that vicariously by saying, that's like us. We are like that. We make those mistakes. But we didn't have to admit it openly. Or do we? You see... At some point in time, God is going to openly demonstrate in you a failing. And when he does, he's there to comfort you and to encourage you and to console you by showing you why or what he had in mind from the beginning. So don't get worried about if you stumble and fall. You're meant to. Yes, you will get a big nose. <laughs> no, you won't get a big nose. But the reality is, is that you are going to fall down at times in your own understanding because God wants to reveal his ways are not your ways he wants you to know that you can fall because his hands are under you girding you up his spirit is there to conform you but also to console you when you do fall down 
when you really blow it in a big way, that may not be God, that might be your flesh, but when you really blow it in a big way, God doesn't say, okay, you're out, you're gone, that's it, history, too bad, no more salvation. But rather, he tells you, he will never leave you nor forsake you. So, don't be surprised when you blow it. And don't be surprised if you make a mistake. It probably was meant to be. Everlasting arms. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. From Deuteronomy 33, 27. Arms. Sheltering arms express the loving tenderness of our Father, of my Father in heaven. Man, in his trouble and difficulty, needs nothing so much as a refuge. He needs a place to hide in, because he's going to run and hide. A place where none and nothing can touch him. But we know God is everywhere. Say to yourself, He is our refuge. Say it until its truth sinks into your very soul. Say it until you know it and are so sure of it that nothing can make you afraid. Because when you turn to Him in your time of need, God will be your sustaining force. He will be your comfort. He will be your shade. He will be your God. And you will be his child. Feel this not only until fear goes, but until joy ripples through its place. God loves you. God will hold you. God will comfort you. God will take care of you. God will be your protection. God will be your forward, your rearward, your upward, and your downward. Because in reality, God doesn't want you to do it. He said, I will be your God, and you will be my people. So don't fear when people touch you, because God will touch them. Refuge. Everlasting arms so untiring, so safe, and so secure. People get into a whole venue of... Well, whoever touches Israel touches the apple of its eye. Can I give you a hint? It's more than that. It's not just Israel. It's you. Whoever touches you touches the apple of its eye. And God will, and I have seen this over my lifetime, whoever does something wrong in you and you don't defend yourself but turn it over to God, I have seen God come on them in ways that I think I could rather have gotten in the way of God restoring to them what they're reaping what they have sown and challenging me in a righteous cause that I almost fear for leaving it in God's hands for even though he's merciful he is just and wow have I seen some of the even some of the places I've worked that have either ripped me off or done something to me that one even burned down and shocked my life as well as I that we could see some of the ramifications of things happening in our own lifetime, how God can bring back and reveal to us in some miraculous way how he protects us, whether we know it or not. And so we need to let go of our own idea of standing up for our rights rather than submitting ourselves to God. So when we get into this whole idea of your rights, how about getting back into your privileges in Jesus which comes through submission and kicking up your cross and following Him. Because you're going to blow it and you're going to fall down. And where are you going to go when you do? I hope and I pray that it'll be into the everlasting arms of the Father who loves you and wants to take care of you every step of the way as you come daily, step by step, closer to knowing Him in a personal, intimate, and finally face-to-face -face way.